Hello, Rich. You're back, mate. Hey, hey, Gordon. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for coming on, mate. I'm, um, I, I, uh, you, you were last on here. Let me just turn it down so you don't get, hopefully that, that's the recording's okay. So last time you were here, uh, we spoke in, what, December before Christmas? About a week or two before yeah. Christmas, didn't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and we were talking, obviously, about Bitcoin and how Bitcoin had shot up. And it was at about £14,000, if I remember right. It was about $19,000, $20,000. What is it now, mate, two months on? When I looked earlier this morning, and this is February the 13th, 2021, it was about $47,500. Just and over £34,000, according to my Exodus app, which I downloaded at your... Very good. And Very I, good. I've set up... So I've set up, you told me... Was it a Litecoin, Bitcoin hash and Ethereum I set up as well for, nobody sent me any yet. I'll be very, I'll be very, <laughs> all, the, all the links will go under this video. So I'll be very surprised. I'll be very interested to see if anybody sends me some crypto. Yes. You should also set up um, an Ethereum address, although Ethereum is a yes, little I've bit done that. To send, right? Okay. So the links are in the description below. So if you want to support Gordon and the work that he does, send him some, and this is on his channel. Uh, send him Bitcoin. I should, I should, I should employ you for, to do my blurbs, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you won't find those links on my channel because I, I don't take donations. Um, so yeah, I, I downloaded that and yeah, it's gone nuts. It's gone nuts and uh, um, all of my friends are like, Gordon, how do I buy Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. um, you, you know people in Bitcoin, you're in the, how do I do it? How, how can I buy in Bitcoin and doggy coin or dodgy coin or whatever it is? So yeah, um, the last two months since you came on, you basically were very excited as to what was going to happen, and it's happened. Yes, still excited, Gordon. And I would say, if I can just plug my channel for people watching Gordon's channel, because it may also go out on my channel, I don't know, but definitely on Gordon's channel. Uh, you can find me on BitTube, bittube.tv, which is a censorship resistant platform, and you can earn cryptocurrency as well. There's bitshoot.com, you can find me on library.com was on library.io and odyssey.com and also on YouTube. Um, and you'll have the links in the description below, Gordon, and people can find out. And I've done a, I've done a series with a guest, Crypto No Coiner. And okay. he asked me questions like, what is Bitcoin? We did a little short video about that. Um, how does it work? How do I get some? And okay. That. So invite people to go and find that out. Great. Himself. Well, send me the send me the link to that if you've got uh, to that, and I'll put it under this video, and people can go there. And you know, anybody who isn't, uh, you know, if I've got any friends or anything, say, Gordon, how do I buy go go Bitcoin? I'll go go to this video. The link's underneath. You can go and listen to you know. Therefore, I don't have to explain it because I don't really know what it is. What I do know is it's going crazy, and the more I what I've figured out, Rich, mm -hmm. tell me if I'm wrong, is whenever they print money at the Fed. Bitcoin goes up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everything goes up. It's weird, isn't it? But no, no. Well, everything goes up. And I think when I was at high school, um, a can of Coke was 50 pence. How yeah, much I, 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 I won't give my age away. I don't know if I'd tell how much. <laughs> <laughs> Polos were six pence, I think. It was shillings, right? You paid half a shilling for a can Not of quite. <laughs> but not far off. <laughs> No, but but that, but it isn't that Bitcoin has gone up in value. It's that everything else is going down. You think? No, or everything's you, going up. When you increase the supply of something against declining demand, or the demand doesn't go up, then this then the value of the thing that you've increased. So they've increased the supply of fiat, of dollars and pounds and euros, right? Mm -hmm. But the demand hasn't gone up. Yeah. So the purchasing power of the fiat currencies, the central bank issued currencies, has gone down. That's all. Bitcoin, one Bitcoin is equal to one Bitcoin. That hasn't mm -hmm. changed. Yeah. But the amount of paper that you need, the increase in the money supply, which is what inflation is, you need more paper to purchase one Bitcoin. It's kind of like, you know, what's happened in Zimbabwe very recently, a few years ago, and regularly happens in Argentina. <coughs> lower pace it loses purchasing power yeah the argentinians are good at that aren't they <laughs> they've done it about six times i think in the last hundred years it's like every, we're bankrupt again can you <laughs> can we have some money again we've lost it all don't know where it's gone and they basically have done that about four or five times from what i can tell now 
So you say one Bitcoin's are worth one Bitcoin and, you know, they, they keep printing money at the Fed. And it looks, to me at least, like this is now, this is the end of Margaritaville. We've talked about this, where now the chicken, whenever they cut the chicken's head off, the only squares are print more money and quantitative easing. That's the, basically all they do now. Yeah. So if that's, is, that's going to devalue the dollar. Yeah. Um, so how long before the dollar isn't the world's reserve currency? How long before the world goes no? And how and if if that happens, is Bitcoin going to be what everybody moves to or something similar? Well, the first question: How long before dollar is no longer the world's reserve currency? I don't know. Well, the if it's dollar, ten years ago, they were saying it was dead. The thing 2008, about two thousand eight, it really died, didn't it? Yep. The, well, actually, it died much, much earlier with the launch of the Federal Reserve and through the um, fractional reserve banking system. But that's a whole other conversation. But the dollar is backed by something. Petrol? No. Well, no. It's backed by military might. So if Saddam Hussein wanted to sell oil in euros. Okay, yeah. And that gave um, that's it, a fair point I, all right that's a good that's a really good right? way to look at it it backed the military with military might you're right because yeah, without that military might behind it yeah. the dollar would have gone away a long time ago wouldn't it that's right libya um the richest best most well-developed african nation they gaddafi wanted to set up an african development bank that would bypass the imf and the world bank and have their libyan dinar backed by gold yeah because of that so off he goes. And then in both instances with Iraq and Libya, the gold's gone. Gold, their gold has gone offshore. And this is, this right? is happening the same in Venezuela, where they found a lot of American oil underneath their own soil that America decided, no, that's ours. It's just underneath your, you know, it's ours. It's, so yeah. it's happened in Venezuela. It's happening right now in Syria. Um, yeah. It's happening in Iraq. Uh, they're trying desperately to overthrow Iran again. To um, isn't this like isn't it a short-sighted way of looking at things? You know, can't it? Because it can't go, carry on like this forever, can it? Yeah, but it's the hubris of imperial of imperial power. So how how can can we stop it? Like if if everybody if everybody in the planet were like you. I went, nah, sorry, we're going to put the money in Bitcoin. Because you explained to me last time you were on how, like, when you're putting money in the bank and when you're buying a share of a company, that's a vote. That's a vote to say, I, I trust this thing. So if, if more people put... Here's the thing. In America at the moment, you've got this whole $2,000 checks. And I know you, you look at the... I know you, your politics are pretty much the same as mine. You can't really nail me down there, to be honest. Um at least you know people have tried in the past and failed but they got the two thousand dollar checks and um uh, uh, they keep pretending they're going to give it them and then take it away and whatever what happens if they give two thousand dollar checks to everybody in america finally or fourteen hundred dollars or whatever mr biden <laughs> decides they all just go yeah we're not going to spend this stimulus it took too long we're going to put it in bitcoin that happened that happened with the first Stimulus check. Now, not oh. everybody did, right? Because some people need the money to buy food. But the middle classes, you know, those that have got a bit of spare, I'll get this, I'll use this to buy Bitcoin. Um, there were many, many transactions in the days afterwards that were $1,200 worth purchases. Isn't this just going to create the wealth gap even worse, though, Rich? Yes and no. Because the people who got the money who need to buy the food bought the food. And the people who got the money who didn't buy the food bought Bitcoin, or at least some of them did. Yeah. So the people who don't need the money, i.e., you know, the, basically the richest 10%, I'm assuming that if you're in the bottom 90% now in America, you need the money for food and rent and light, etc. So the 10% are then, you know, when Bitcoin does go to, as, as many people are expecting, $300,000, $500,000 of Bitcoin, they're going to be even, the wealth gap is going to be, 
I mean, it's Pharaoh level stuff now. It's off the. It's going to be off the chart, isn't it? It is, it is going to be like that, right? But there's something different about cryptocurrencies, and now I'll talk about cryptocurrencies. Okay. What we thought is a central is a is a cent, is a government monopoly on the issue on the on value transfer. Value if, transfer. So value, explain that's, that. That's what money is, right? That I exchange my time and effort for something with your time and effort for something. Mm -hmm. And then we use this um, unit of exchange. You know, you spend 10 energy hours yeah, yeah. producing something. And then, then you, you, we use this unit of exchange to transfer the energy hours. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what money is, right? Yeah. So the unit, a unit of exchange, this unit of exchange. So you're talking about basically what all the economists talk about with the barter system. And then, you yeah. know, if I, if I make shoes and I need forks, but the person who makes forks doesn't need shoes, we need some sort of currency exchange to be able to facilitate that transaction. Correct. That's right. Now, Currently, governments and central banks have a monopoly on that value transfer system between two individuals. Okay. Right? Yes. So, so we are subordinate to their rules. We have no say in the matter. Yeah. What cryptocurrency makes available is the democratization and the decentralization of value transfer systems. So yes, one Bitcoin may be too expensive. I am... I can no longer afford, or I'm unwilling to afford, you know, to mortgage my house, wife and children to go and purchase one Bitcoin. Right? <laughs> but I could mm -hmm. go and purchase a hundred Dogecoin yeah. or some of the other cryptocurrencies. I could even set up my own local exchange mechanism. You know, you may have heard let's local exchange trading schemes and everything, right? Mm -hmm. I could even set up my own local cryptocurrency for people in this part of the world to exchange in, in a way that's fully decentralized, that's transparent, that can't be censored, can't be controlled. Can't and be manipulated. That nobody has, has um, any sort of ownership of it. So what you have is the democratization and the decentralization of the issuance and use of value transfer systems. Wouldn't wouldn't moving over and uh, moving over in this way to and sort of taking control of our own currency i i heard one guy uh i think it was last year i've forgotten the guy's name now although he might have got the same from somebody else the same was brilliant so i didn't come up with this it was bitcoin will do for money what the internet did for information yeah um so you know the the problem that they've got at the moment with the information you and i you know we're very we're sort of lefty libertarians, I suppose, and we're, we're, we're very pro pre, uh, pre, free, free speech, both of us. Mm -hmm. And we've got a, a situation at the moment where the, the reason that they're clamping down so much on free speech and ideas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is because they've lost control of the narrative. The, the information, because, you know, the genie's out the bottle with the internet. The information is out there. Yes, there's a load of crap out there and you've got to sift through a load of rubbish. But eventually, if you really are, uh, if you've got a brain in your head, you can figure out generally what the truth is on certain subjects. You, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that certain news stories in this country are absolutely untrue and fake news and promoted by the BBC and the Guardian, etc. And then they point their fingers and go, look, China, you know, fake news, Russia, fake news. It's, it's hypocritical. But the point I'm trying to make is if we take this sort of, you know, and we really do start implementing it and saying to you, to the banking system, to, to everything, it's going to collapse it all for a start, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that's going to be terrifying, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I think what is that going to look like? I have no idea, but, but I, but I, but you know, See, you're advocating it, but if we do that, which it's going to collapse things, well, it's going to collapse anyway. And we get, yeah, I, yeah, it anyway. is. And when we don't know, but what, what's going to happen then is hyperinflation, isn't it? You yep, know, it's a, a, a loaf of bread is going to be a hundred quid, but not point not 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 one bitcoin or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's going to collapse anyway because of the money printing. Plus, also hyperinflation is going to come because 
governments, other governments are moving away from using the dollar as the reserve currency. Yeah. That is how we can see this as well because China, Russia are buying gold like it's going well, like like there's a finite supply, which there is. <laughs> um, sorry, carry on. Iran is trend is uh, transacting in Bitcoin. They're using they've allowed for their power certain power stations to mine Bitcoin. There's a province in Pakistan, which is the 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 provincial government has set up its own. Bitcoin mining farm. So you so there's a revenue stream for the, for the provincial government. Uh, now, when when other governments see that, they're gonna be like, okay, we want that as well. Because if any territory has gold, they're like, okay, we'll mine the gold. Well, mm -hmm. any territory pretty much has Bitcoin because it's fully decentralized. And then I want to go back to the second question you asked earlier about the wealth gap that it's created. Yeah. This is the so thing, one, because so when got, it does collapse... You've got this decentralization and this democratization, so you actually have the opportunity so for people at grassroots level... To pull themselves up a lot quicker than their own value fighting for... Plus, plus Gordon, I, I did, I'm going to tell you a story in crypto which is completely wild, and All I right. want you to know that what's happening right now is there is some serious wealth to be made. And I don't mean getting rich, I mean being wealthy out of the bull run that I think that we're just in the early stages of. Um, and, you know, people got to check it out and do their own due diligence. And I'm not advocating that people should buy this particular cryptocurrency over any other. They got to check it out for themselves. Although I do think Bitcoin and Ethereum are pretty safe bets. Um, so one, you know, I'm a, I'm a social worker and I've actually gone back to social work, child protection, social work. And the reason I've gone back is because the YouTube shadow ban, I wanted cash coming in. I don't want to cash in any of my crypto holdings. In fact, I want to buy more crypto. So um, I don't have a pension. You know, I'm educated, I'm middle class. I've done a, a fair amount of social work in my, in my life. And because social work, because I don't think social workers have any union power, because when social workers go on strike, nobody cares. When teachers go on strike, the middle class are really upset. Mm. Right. So social workers have no union power or anything. Um, so they're not as well paid, I think, as some of other equivalent um, professions. So I don't have a pension. I've got a wife and two kids and a mortgage. Yeah. Right. So what am I going to do? So then I come across the opportunity of cryptocurrencies. Now, I'm lucky that I got in a few years ago when Bitcoin was much, much cheaper. OK, so now I'm set up. My, my, I'm taken care of mm -hmm. in a way that wouldn't happen before unless I'd taken a much lower job, which meant lower well-paid job, which meant I wouldn't have been able to educate my kids at home and stuff because both my wife and I would have had to work all the time and stuff in order to mm -hmm. keep things going. Plus also we would have got paid in a, in a currency, the pound that is losing value. You know, so, but, so by the time I retire, the spending power of the pound is going to be much, much lower than when I was earning it. So there's that, right? So that's, that's a, so that's what, you know, the, the, the super uber rich are getting richer and richer and richer. The middle classes and the, the poor, tragically, are all, always crushed, but they're being crushed even more by lockdown, I think, right? And then the middle classes are just getting poorer anyway. They're being crushed by lockdown. And, you know, it's a process that's been going on for ages and ages and ages ever since we've had neoliberalism as the dominant economic political philosophy. In April 2017, I bought this particular cryptocurrency called Vergecoin. Right. I bought 250,000 coins. Okay. For $30. Okay. Right. I mean, it was that cheap. It was in a quarter of a million coins for $30. It was what's called seven Satoshi. So Bitcoin is divisible to eight decimal places. Okay. Satoshis. So I bought so seven Satoshis. The eighth decimal place was one Verge coin. <laughs> okay. So that's like the, that's the least amount that you could, right. Yeah. Okay. Like one penny is the least you can divide a, a pound in, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I bought a quarter of a million in April, 2017. Uh, is, uh, is that worth like a quarter of a million now? Is it worth a no, pound no, no, now? No. <laughs> Here's what happened. So, so we're in a cyclical bill, bull run, which happens every four years because of the Bitcoin um, algorithm. Okay. I think I might have covered that in the first video. I don't know, right? I think you did, yeah. Yeah. Is it the, is goes, it the halving? Yes, that's right, okay. it. Bitcoin mm -hmm. goes up in value, goes up in value, goes up in value first. Then the Ethereum starts catching up. 
Mm -hmm. And that's the second largest cryptocurrency. Then the other cryptocurrencies by market cap, like currently Polkadot and Cardano and Ripple and XLM and stuff like that. They all get dragged up by it as well. Like a Mexican wave. Yeah. Right. And then, and then what happens is as Bitcoin goes up and Ethereum goes up and the medium market cap goes up. And your Verge coin at the bottom. People start coming in, they start coming in and they start bargain hunting. Right. Now, it's easier to double $30 than it is to double $1,000. Yeah. So, although, had you invested $1,000 the last time you came on in Bitcoin, it would now be worth well over $2,000. Yes. And I, in December, I bought, in December, had I bought a whole bunch of, well, I actually did, I bought a bunch of mid cap market coins. Mm hmm. And some of them have increased by over 400%. Yeah. Since then, right? In the space of six weeks. Um, now, so I bought 250,000 of these Verge coins. So Bitcoin goes up, Ethereum goes up, the other market cap goes up, and then these small altcoins, they shoot up like crazy. At one point, my $30 was worth $92,000. You're <laughs> kidding me. I'm not kidding you. Holy I am shit. not kidding you. There is an insane amount of money to be made. You right? turn thirty dollars into ninety-two grand. Yes, and then and then my wife, we should sell it, sell it, sell it. And I was foolish and greedy. I didn't understand market cycles, and I just come into the space and everything. Right? Yeah. No, no, no. It will keep going higher. Keep going higher. Right? And actually, people started cashing out when it, you know, yes, no would, yeah. And, I, and uh, it crashed down, crashed down, crashed down. And when it got to twelve hundred, I cashed out. So $30 became $1,200, which is still uh, not crazy, right? Now, what we... The, in but then you just got to wait for the wave to come around again, won't you? Because yeah, that's just a new... Start. I have lost money. I have lost money on, on, on projects that are scams. Yeah. And projects that are shams. Like, they just failed. Mm -hmm. They tried really hard or did everything right. They weren't out to scam anybody, but it just didn't work out. A failed business venture, right? Okay. So um, the bull run that's coming now that we're in the early stages of is going to be much, much larger and bigger and more powerful than the one of 2017. In 2017, you had the really, really early adopters, you know, mm -hmm. people like myself and stuff and people came in before me. And then towards the end of 2017, my cousins get interested and my family members and friends get interested. But then when Bitcoin crashed down from 20,000 to 3,200, they lost interest. Oh, it's nothing. And now it's $30,000 again. My cousins are getting interested again. They already know about it. They've been watching mm -hmm. me. So, okay. So they, they, you know, they're a bit savvy about it now. And they, hopefully they understand market cycles. So cousins, if you're watching this, okay. <laughs> We're in for the long term. Come back, talk to me in 10 years, 11 years, right? Tell me how your cryptocurrencies are doing. So there's going to be a whole, I think it's going to be much, much bigger. And one of the reasons it's going to be much, much bigger is because there's a larger awareness, but there's institutional investments moving in. Yeah. Um, I, I want to talk to you about this because Tesla have bought 1.5 billion in Bitcoin. I sent my, my missus because my, my missus bought some Bitcoin at my request. <laughs> She's very clever. You see, She's, she saw our interview and went, I'll buy some Bitcoin and made some, I didn't make anything. I've got no money, you see, to invest. So that's yeah, the way it is. Um, but I forgot what I was, what, what I was going on. Tesla, you were saying about Tesla. Yeah, uh, they invested and I, I sent her a message. Um, let me just find it. Because this was huge, I thought anyway. Um, yeah, it was in Financial Times yesterday. Bitcoin hits record as US financial giants embrace cryptocurrency. BNY Mellon and MasterCard unveil new services within 24 hours of each other. So this happened yesterday, which is why there was a bump yesterday and it went up to a new high. Yeah. You know, it went up to a new high, was it last week, because of the news that Tesla invested 1.5 billion and Elon Musk went giddy for it and dodgy coin on, on the internet. And that was very funny as well. Yeah. Not for people who were locked out of their accounts, but um, more and more is going to happen. And sooner or later, 
I mean, if MasterCard, if you're going to be able to link your Bitcoin account to your MasterCard account, surely fiat money's over. Yes and no. Yes and no, right? What's to, when is does it need more of us? Does it need a, a sort of a tipping point of people to, to adopt it? Or is it just no, going to... Because I think the banks will strike back. Central banks hate competition. They already are, aren't they? And, and how I think they're striking back, right? And this is, could be a whole other conversation, is the Great Reset. That they want to impose the Great Reset. Okay, explain to me the Great, great Reset, because okay. I wish you had so much, Rich, I could talk to you for hours. I wish you had so much longer, we really could. Because yeah. we could go off to all sorts of avenues. We could, we could, God, we could. So this is, this is what the World, the World Economic Forum have yeah. mentioned it, the reset and whatever. This is nobody's going to have any possessions and we're going to all live in a John Lennon record, yeah? Yeah. Now, I, I it's... It, yeah, I'm sure Nancy Pelosi's going to love you taking her $150 million off her. And, we're not going to own anything and we'll be happy. However, somebody's going to own all the stuff there is. The uber rich are going to own all the stuff there is, right? And they'll be very, very happy. Yeah, the uber rich like who it. just put all the last of the fiat money in the Bitcoin. Yeah, well, where it's coming in is through central bank digital currencies. Central okay. bank digital currencies are horrible. There will be no freedom with central bank digital currencies. So who's, who's got a... Have the IMF got a uh, cryptocurrency or will they? No, centri the, I know... I don't know about the IMF. It wouldn't surprise me if they were, but the European ECB are developing a central bank digital currency. The Bank of England is developing one. China is developing one. Uh, the US is developing one. And what that is, so, so Bitcoin's a completely open system. You don't need anybody's permission to go in and out of it. Central bank digital currencies will be on the blockchain, but it will be a closed system that they will be able to run. Every time you go shopping, what your purchases, whatever you buy, will be known if, for example, you send money to a political organization that the government or the central bank doesn't like, they can shut your account, they can retrieve funds from your account, they mm -hmm. can impose negative interest rates. They can do all the stuff that they're they doing do right now, in other words. Stuff, right? So, you know, nobody they can wants print to more up. crypto. Yeah, nobody, nobody wants to give up power. Nobody wants to give up power. Now, I think this, and this is a whole other conversation that I don't want to get into right now. Yeah. I think this ties in with the politics of the lockdown and the coronavirus and the sham news that we... Well, Rich, a lot of people do, all right? A lot of people do. Now, I know you wanted to talk about this, the politics of the lockdown, and if you want, we can do. Mm -hmm. um, it's the timing, isn't it? It's the timing of it all that people are, are like, hold on a minute. It's the timing of it all with the lockdowns and why they're, they're, not, they're not listening to science. And they're saying they're listening to science, but they're not. The scientists mm. said last year, they said, the scientists said, right, okay, what we need is for no ridiculous stuff and no knee-jerk reactions and what have you. And the very next day, the government went, we're shutting pubs at 10 p.m. There was no scientific evidence for that whatsoever. But they just did it. The, yeah. the day after, the scientists were on the BBC saying, no knee-jerk reactions, no ridiculous, we, we need to be calm heads. And that, the government did it the next day. Yeah. And people like me are looking at it going, well, you, you're giving the conspiracy theorists, as you call them, all the fuel in the world here, aren't you? Mm. But, 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 Gordon, I don't think it's... So one, governments are clumsy, large, mendacious, stupid inefficient organizations yes right? but the other side of it is I, I would say follow the money who's got crushed who's got wealthy how come yeah. a supermarket store can open but not a small you know i can go buy clothes at asda and tesco but not at a small independent local retailer billionaires have what tripled their wealth in the last 12 months yeah and then people have um you know, the poor and the middle class, they've been crushed, small businesses. So what's happened is people have had their independence taken away from them. Okay. People are increasingly dependent upon government largesse and that a dependent population are easier to control. So then what we could have is at some point down the road, UBI, universal basic income, via a central bank digital currency, and then we're controlled. Okay. 
Whereas if we take control of our own finances and decouple from their system, we yeah. basically can fight back and they can't control us the way they are. Because it's, I mean... That's right. This is, this is the promise. Let me, let me just say something. I want to bring it back to cryptocurrency. This is the promise of decentralization and censorship resistant technology like blockchain, like also the censorship resistant um, vlogging platforms like BitTube and um, Library. But um, there's, a v, there's a VPN. Now take a note of this one, right? A decentralized VPN called mm -hmm. Sentinel.co. Now I'm, I hold Sent tokens. Right, people should do their own due diligence. And What's it called, them. mate? Sentinel. 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 Co. Okay. Now, in now, an, a traditional VPN, you've got a handful of servers here and there. Yeah. Okay? Like, um, you know, one of the big ones. They'll have servers in every different country and stuff. But yeah. they're prone to regulatory capture. They're closed source systems, so we don't know if there's any back doors in there that the NSA is sneaking in and stuff like that. Right. Which there probably are. Yep. Um, and uh, we have to trust them. Now, an open source decentralized VPN system like Sentinel can't be censored. There's no single point of failure. It's distributed. And the information is completely distributed, like on the BitTorrent network. And governments haven't been able to stop BitTorrent and file sharing. Now, something like Sentinel allows people to preserve their information and their privacy. Without anybody being able to Without see Without anybody it. knowing, right? Plus also Sentinel allows you to earn um, a passive income as well, because you rent out your bandwidth to the decentralized VPN okay. system. And they're about to launch on mainnet in a few weeks time. It's pretty much imminent, right? It's, it's available for free right now on Android desktop and iOS. You can actually use it for free at no cost. That's the test program. The mainnet, there will be a charge, but you can also earn money from it. Now, one of the things is I got some cent tokens in March 2020. Okay. $250 worth. Not $250,000. Not $250,000. Not $250,000 worth, I wish. Those $250 worth of cent tokens are now worth $2,500 worth. Okay. So I've just sat with them and done nothing, right? So that's one way, you know, look, I get it's tough. I get it's tough. You know, if people don't have surplus income, I'm fortunate. I'm middle class. I can work from home. Right. Mm -hmm. But for this, it's important enough to, okay, maybe, maybe forego that cup of coffee, maybe make your own coffee and then go out or something, maybe forego that little treat and then think about the future because, you know, I could have cashed in that, you know, that $250, I could have spent it on something else. I could have, when it was $500. Well, I this is what I, when somebody sent me, somebody sent me about 500 pound in Bitcoin a couple of years ago. And I, I mean, I've got no money. I had to spend it. I had to buy, I had rent and food and shit. I yeah. had to, people who were poor can't invest. They need it for light and heat and what have you. So even though the people who are poor will, will have the information now that other people have, that, who, who have got money, they can't take advantage of it. You know, yes. it's not like in 2008 when everybody knew the, when all the rich people knew that the crash were coming and the poor people didn't. Mm. We all know that this is coming now. We all know that, 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 that the big crash is coming. We just don't know when. But when it happens, the poor aren't going to be able to take advantage of it. It's going to be the rich again. And in the last 10 years, they've made out like pharaohs and they're going to have all the capital in the world to buy whatever the new crypto is or whatever whatever he's going to make and they're going to make even more money they and are. The worry is that, that this the money's going to be spread the money's going to be spread so this is so it's going to be what they're going to take the money off the rich and spread it to everybody how they're going to do no. that no because you, you and i now have the opportunity okay we're, we're not like the families that i work with as a social worker mm -hmm. right and they're going to find it really really tough yes yeah but you and I still have the opportunity to get a piece of the pie that we never had before. You know, my future right. really was a future of, of penury without a pension. Okay. So one of the things that's happened in the last, it's probably a good thing, really. <laughs> one good thing about the coronavirus is one of the things that it's taught us all do, to do, I expect most people are like me in that we all tightened our bloody belts. Mm -hmm. I don't 
cook i don't buy curries anymore i don't buy takeaways i cook all my own stuff now and it's better than takeaway stuff I, you know oh, youtube's sorry, to, fantastic for you. recipes and stuff i have to stop you right because you're talking to a curry expert i was breastfed this stuff right so go check out this youtube channel headbangers kitchen okay okay <laughs> headbangers kitchen headbangers kitchen on youtube is that is that like uh, Indian um, Asian curries? Yeah, oh, proper, proper, and it's keto. It's high fat, low carb because I'm high fat. Oh, low. right, okay. Yeah, um, but the guy I, I've met him, uh, really, really great recipes, and um, he, he's a headbanger. He's a headbanger. You All know, right. t-shirt, long yeah. hair, music, and everything. Right, the first time I watched him, and I'm, and then and then he says, "Horns up, everybody! Welcome to Headbangers Kitchen." <laughs> I gotta check this guy out. So the, my, my, my point is, we've all tightened our belt, belts. I've no. learned to cook, with, you know, and, and, and save. We save. I mean, even though my, my, when lockdown happened, my money, which wasn't much anyway, just cut in half. I said to everybody, just, you know, don't worry about me, worry about yourself. And then YouTube cut me off totally with the, I was getting, getting no views. So I was getting no, nothing at all. My money went down by half, but I still managed to survive so simply by, control my I get less money than I get I get paid less than somebody on minimum wage like right. half you know so I've learned to contract but obviously as things open up a little bit and maybe we make so much money this is going to be what I'm going to have to do and what we you're suggesting everybody else do isn't it and start yes, and getting maybe at the lower levels and not investing in bitcoin yeah and there's free crypto you can get crypto for free. So look, really? I'll tell people how you can do this now, right? So, you um, and and you can do this as well. And other people can do this. There's a. I'll give you the the Bitly link. It's bit.ly slash BitTube Rewards. Okay. Okay. And that's that's an affiliate link that I have. You follow that affiliate link. It takes you through to the BitTube.app website. Links under this video. Yeah. You install a um, browser extension. It works on Firefox. It works on um, Brave. Okay. Right. And Chrome and internet, I think internet Explorer as well. Right. And then what it does is I just leave it open running. I don't have to do anything. Mm. I earn one or two two coins every single day just okay. for surfing the internet. I don't have to go on their website. I don't have to do anything. Right. Now two coins are currently just over a cent. So it's not 10 a years. There might be a I have over the last year accumulated six and a half thousand tube coins this way. Right. So they're about, when I look yesterday, it's about $90 or something. Not a lot. So you really are investing in your future by doing this. I'm investing you? This, is, this is, is, is this tube. better than a pension? Tube all time high was 40 cents. Okay. So at some point, I think in my opinion, tube coins are going to go back to 40 cents and more. So the cryptocurrency that I've earned for free, you know, if it was, if it goes up to 40 cents, I, my math isn't good enough. What was that? It's two and a half. How many, how many did you have? Well, I've got 6,000 that I've earned on the air. And it, well, if it goes up to 40 cents and you've got 6,000 of them, it will be worth 2,400 pounds. $2,400, right? And it's likely to go higher because they're, they're building more. They've got more services. I'm on the BitTube platform, right? And... Um, because of the bull run that's coming. Now, there are other ways that people can earn free cryptocurrency. If I buy Cosmos coin, which is about $20, right. you buy Cosmos coin, you put it in your Exodus wallet, you can stake it in your Exodus wallet and you're earning 9% a year. Okay, stake. Yeah. You can stake it in your wallet? What does that mean? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Consider it like an interest paying account. You just hold the money in a deposit in your wallet. You just you don't do anything. You just hold it there, and then and then crypto. So, so so if I get if I get money sent to this this Exodus app mm -hmm. from people, Exodus, I, I, so yeah. all I can do is just hold it there. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you got to do. You know, so it's just it's just that Exodus thing. That's just there to just say right, okay, you've got the money here. And yeah. you can only like transfer it to other places from there. Yeah, but you can also ex do exchanges from crypto to crypto within. Okay, right. right. That's that's so happening. You could, you could take some of your Bitcoin or your ETH or your Litecoin that people send you to the to the address in the little below and say, "Listen, Gordon, we really appreciate the work you do. Here's a little bit of Litecoin. Perfect. You can convert that to Cosmos, 
and then hold it. You just keep it in your Exodus wallet, click one or two buttons, and then you'll start receiving interest. Now, if you have one Cosmos, you're not going to earn a lot, but you yeah. can keep compounding. And over time... Yeah, in 10 years' time. You're right. And the, Brave, I don't use Brave Browser, but Brave Browser allows you to earn rewards uh -huh. just for using their browser. Just for using the browser. I've, I've heard of that. They, 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 they do an affiliate thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, and then for you, Gordon, there are affiliate thing, there are affiliate links that you can use. You know, I've got, you know, you managed to save a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. You put it in the Shrimpy trading bot, which I'm I'm using, and it's it's set and forget. And uh, I think what well, in one of my portfolios there since the 30th of January, I've doubled my Bitcoin holdings. This is no different to any like you know, ISA or, or any, of the, any of the systems that the banks have of putting money away to make interest, is it? It's no different to that, really, other than the fact it's that you've got full control of it. Yeah, it's decentralized, censorship resistant, and it's not owned by some sort of other agency like government, like a central bank that can say, okay, we'll have some of that. Yeah. Or maybe we can't do that anymore. So it's liberating. Now, the one thing I did want to do, well, I, I wanted to touch on this. I touched on it last time, but maybe, I, I don't know. I, I, like I say, I've, I've, I told you before we came on air, I think I've been, over the last month, I've been sorting a lot of personal stuff out. So I had yeah. my output on, hasn't been that great on my videos or whatever. It's about to go um, to, to the levels it was before. Now I've got that sorted out. But um, I want to be able to, the Bitcoin that I get or the, the, the crypto that I get, I want to be able to hold it myself. So those there's wallets, isn't there, that you can get like physical digital wallets that you can get. Yeah. Should it, is it, is it better that is, do you suggest I get one of those or do you suggest that we use something like Coinbase to buy our crypto on? No. Okay. Coinbase. So use something like Coinbase. Um, and I think I'm about to post a video soon on how to buy crypto and it really de depends upon different jurisdictions what's best, but you people should compare commission rates and everything. There's crypto.com, which works in the UK and many parts of Europe. And I have an affiliate link for that. And if you use that, you get $25 worth of cryptocurrency. And so do I, right? There's um, in the UK, blockchain.com. That's crypto.com, isn't it? That. Yeah. So yeah. I've got that and I've got a sign up thing. So you I should... haven't done it yet because oh, I you need to put your it. affiliate link in. Okay. All right. So... Well, uh, invited ad referral code it says so i thought yeah i'll wait for rich yeah and then you'll get you get 25 dollars worth of crypto of okay. CRO tokens right so will i so that's a way of earning fr free cryptocurrency then the other thing is um in the uk there's coinbase you can buy off i've never used coinbase myself but i hear good things about it and also i hear bad things there's binance there's kraken there's Paxful. there's local bitcoins if you want you know, a bit more privacy and stuff, which is what I first used, but it's a bit more expensive. There may be Bitcoin ATMs in your area. There's also yeah. a new wallet that I'm looking at called Oxys.com. I'll be posting a video about that on my channel, which allows you to buy by bank transfer or debit card. So yeah, that's um, the, the, do you think it will get to the stage where you've got a debit card attached to your Bitcoin account or your crypto I account? have. You already have. So you, like you, so when, so the thing is, I was watching the BBC the other day, and they were talking about crypto, nice. and a guy was talking. Always about get good crypto. information. He, he was saying that, that, that crypto was oh, years ago. I bought a pizza with one. <laughs> you can't really do much with it. That's total rubbish, isn't it? It's complete rubbish. It's a, this is, I mean, the BBC is completely. Two days ago, I lit the, on that TV. I listened to you. Yeah, I, I bought a, I bought a, I bought a, I bought a pizza in 2014. Yeah, but they can't really do much with it. <laughs> I have used Crypto.com card to purchase my grocery shopping. To it's purchase your grocery, so you can. You, that's rubbish. You can you can attach it to a a debit card and basically use your crypto the same way as you would your bank. Yes, there are increasing number of cards that offer. Where that. do I go to do that? Crypto.com, <laughs> right? Now, I haven't checked it for a while. Okay. I haven't used my card for a while. So sometimes the regulations change and everything. Crypto.com offer that. Binance offer that. There's a project called Turnio that offers that that I haven't used. 
And there's increasing numbers of these. But you know, you mentioned at the beginning that MasterCard are going to start making services available. Visa said that a couple of weeks as well. They're going to make cryptocurrency payments available. Yeah, PayPal because are getting so big into it, aren't they? They've um, PayPal, I noticed yesterday, Dave, uh, that they were going, I think it was 2022, that they were going to allow it to be happening in this country. But because of the demand in America where they rolled it out, they're saying, no, we're bringing it to the UK this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I wouldn't personally use PayPal to purchase Bitcoin. Neither would I. My, my understanding is you can't take the Bitcoin out of PayPal. If you can't take it out of PayPal, it ain't your Bitcoin. You've got to put it in your own wallet. Now, um, so... What's the saying? If you don't hold the keys, you don't have the wallet your, or whatever it's called? Not your keys, not your crypto, because it can be captured by the other agent. Like your keys, you your crypto. Party, right? So... Go and buy from Coinbase or Kraken or wherever, right? But then okay. put it in your own wallet where you own the private keys. Crypto.com, you own the own, it's your private keys. You have access to the private Okay, keys. so buy it uh, buy it from Coinbase or buy it from Coinbase it or wherever or Kraken, Kraken or wherever, and yeah. then transfer it to your crypto.com wallet. Yeah, your crypto.com wallet. Now the thing about a software wallet like crypto.com or Exodus or many of these other wallets. For large amounts and for long-term storage, they're not safe because they can right. be hacked, yeah. you can lose them, right? So then you're really best off with a hardware wallet. And, you know, um, I, re I recommend EliPal or the Apollo wallet. I have affiliate links for those and you should get affiliate links. For Are those. they expensive? Um, I think that... Because they look really smart, some of them do. They look, they look like a little phone almost, like a little pager, don't they? Yes, uh, the EliPal wallet is about, I think, $150 or something. I mean, okay. You can, you can also get paper wallets, which are completely secure. All right. right. That are offline. You just have to have enough copies of it and don't lose those. Yeah. You lose that, you, it's gone. But if what you're going to have now is $30 of Verge coin, which at the end of the year is going to be $90,000, for example, I'm not saying that it's going to happen again, right? Then it might be worth forking out $140, $50 to keep that $90,000 secure. <laughs> when your Verge coin went to 92 grand, and did, were, you, were you contemplating selling out or were you in it like now I'm in it for the long time? No, I was greedy. I was greedy. I was like, it's going to go higher. It's going to go higher. I and then it dropped like a stone and you couldn't get well, it. Well, yeah, they all kind of dropped. I didn't understand. Has it gone that. up again since, since it, yes. it, it leveled it out to 1200? Yes, but it's still not as... It's not as cheap as it was before. Yeah, but you still turn thirty dollars into over a grand. I mean, that's a massive it's success, isn't it? It's ridiculous. But there's others like that. There's so many like that. You find legitimate projects. Right? And, but there's obviously some that you know that fail, and you will lose your money. Yeah. So it's just yeah. So, so I was a bit like well, thirty dollars. I can afford to lose that. I'll give it a punt. <laughs> yeah. And that was yeah. actually how I first started with Bitcoin. My wife and I, okay, well, we'll put some money in that we can afford to lose. If it goes to nothing, fine. Yeah, this is, this is something that we need to start, start looking at and maybe like, all right, I'm going to have to start treating Bitcoin like my savings account or crypto like my savings account. Start, you know, I yeah. should get a no, savings account to, to start with, shouldn't I, really? If people are going to, if people are going to um, invest in small amounts, right, for whatever reason, just because they're testing it or they don't have yeah. to spare the money or they don't want to spare the, spare the money, right? One of the things you have to watch out with Bitcoin and with Ethereum are the transaction fees. So Exodus Wallet will tell you what the transaction fees are if you wanted to. You can even put in the send, you know, just press send. You don't have to put an address. Yeah. And it'll show you at the bottom what the transaction fee will be. So, for mm -hmm. example, if people wanted to send, send you $10 worth of Bitcoin, it might cost them $5 in yeah. transaction fee. But, but if they send $10 of Litecoin, it might cost them 50 cents. Oh, less, it's cheaper. It's so tra like I think you mentioned this last time, transferring smaller amounts of money is much more, uh, or smaller amounts of crypto is much more beneficial if you use one of the lesser known cheaper cryptos because they're, I think you were saying, they, they, the fees are much less, aren't they? Yes, the fees are much, much less. And there's a, you know, maybe go buy some, what you can do is buy some Bitcoin or Litecoin or ETH from some of the major exchanges. You won't be able to get the smaller coins. You have to go to, little niche exchanges that are tucked away in the corners of the blockchain somewhere, yeah. right? <laughs> and some of them can be well shady. So you've got to be yeah. careful. Just put it in, do the trade, take it out. Um, 
but move, but you can also do transactions within Exodus wallet or atomic wallet or oxys.com. You'll have exchange fees. So you can lose money on the exchange fees. Yeah. You've got to work for that, right? And the commissions and stuff. Um, but you know, I, I would also say to people move into privacy coins, put your money in Monero. Monero was, is about $150, $60 right now. It was pennies. It was pennies in 2016. My, some of my friends, um, get paid in crypto they're on um they're on a crypto platform uh, a subscription click crypto platform and you know my friends have been saying that when they first started getting paid it was like 10 cents in what they're getting paid and now it's over four dollars and this is just a year later they yeah. were getting paid in like it was worth 10 cents what they were getting paid in and now what they're getting paid in is worth over four dollars so if they got 10 whatever coins you know, or hundred coins or whatever it is last year. Now they then want to think, oh, it's only you know ten dollars, but now it's worth over four hundred four hundred dollars. And if you've got you know two and a half thousand or whatever it was you had of yeah. of that Verge coin, it really adds up. It's a pension, isn't it? Yeah, completely, completely. Now th there's another coin that I that I want to recommend, um, and and it's one that I'm also I also hold, but it's great for privacy, which is Pirate Chain. And pirate chain people are and i invite people to go to coinmarketcap.com and you know they can it's a great place to start getting information on cryptocurrencies and everything because you have to watch out about going to dodgy websites yeah and getting fished and having your private keys taken away mm -hmm. right so coinmarket.com is a great Be careful place. where you go people okay. you know yeah I, I would suggest if you're if you're not if you're not uh, uh, an expert like rich you stick to the major sites uh, yeah. the ones that are more trusted rather than the coin mark, but even the major sites, you know, somebody can there's no guarantee with them. That's right. Instead of going to exodus.io, somebody might end up going to exodus.com and private keys gone. Yeah. It looks the same, right? So yeah. coin market cap is a great resource for get to I think getting to legitimate sites. But even then you want to use a VPN, you want to check the site certificate, because it's your money. You mm. lose it, it's gone. There's no there's no FCA to reclaim from or anything, right? Yeah. But pirate chain, I'm gonna say pirate chain is ridiculously ridiculously private there is no transactions on the blockchain you cannot cannot do any data analytics because it's invisible it's completely invisible so it's a way of pe for people to preserve their financial privacy because you know if i you put your litecoin address mm -hmm. i could go and have a look at that and then see how much litecoin you got and then yeah. i could see where you sent it to I don't necessarily want people to know my, you know, I don't publish my bank account details for yeah. people to have a look at. Right. So you can preserve your financial privacy and it's a, it's a small market cap coin like Sentinel that could give ridiculous returns. So I'm not suggesting anybody go and sell their remortgage their house or anything like that, but you know, don't put any more than you can afford to lose, but it's worth looking at. And I, I come, but I have to say, I'm, I, have, I cover both these projects. I'm covering other projects. I did an interview with a project called secret.network and that'll be out on my channel. And that's because I'm just, I just think privacy is so important. Are the authorities going to try cracking down on this in the, uh, under the guise of like they do with everything or under the guise terrorism. of our protection? Um, yeah, terrorism and money laundering. HSBC do not like corporate. <laughs> <do> not like <laughs> this, this is the, the hypocrisy of it, right? Because they're going to say that, we, yeah, we crypto, we do, oh, you criminals use it and it's criminals because you can't be traced and whatever. It's like HSBC, come on. <laughs> but the thing is, it's not, I, hypocrisy, I, but, Gordon. it's not hypocrisy if you bear in mind that they're all gangsters. It's <laughs> so funny that they, they, they're so funny. They, the BBC the other day, this is two days ago, three days ago as well. You need to cut that out and you need to start listening to Tom Luongo on YouTube and also the Duran. Mate, I have to listen to BBC. It's my oh, job. No. I'm a journalist. I have to do it. I have to, I have to show people, look, Duran. they're lying to you. <laughs> You've got to listen to the Duran. They do really great. I know. Work. The Duran, are I, I listen to the Duran all the time. They're great. I, I know Alexander and uh, they, they're fantastic. Yeah. Um, he's a good man, Alexander. He's very, 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 very intelligent and very clued up. I th there's there's something I wanted to talk to you about. It's just gone out of my head now. Yeah, that was it. The the, the BBC. Yeah. They they did a report the other day on Bitcoin, right? They they're poo pooing Bitcoin, right? You because you, you know all, they're all scared of this. They said that Bitcoin is using to mine Bitcoin to keep it going every year it uses the energy that it requires to power Argentina. Yeah. Did you see this? 
I, 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 I don't watch the BBC, but I heard about article. I think it's completely, completely shocking. And I think it's a very valid argument for getting rid of Bitcoin. We should stop using Bitcoin because it uses more energy than Argentina. Think of those poor Argentinians. They I don't... know. And there's no electricity. But do you know something? Belgium also uses more energy than Argentina. We should get rid of Belgium, perhaps. Yeah, but the thing is, but the thing is, you know, if you By actually way, look at the Gordon, moment... Gordon, 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 no offence to any Belgians. We should <laughs> But the thing is, if you, if you look at it at the moment, you know, the dollar is backed by militarism. Yeah. So, what's worse? Oh, Gordon, Gordon, <laughs> you and I don't have an you argument. Know, a friend the of the mine dollar is backed me. by the biggest polluter on the planet. That's right. That's the American right. Gordon, military. Gordon, you and I don't... A friend of mine sent this article to me, and I said, what? I said, what BS? How come there's nothing about the environmental destruction right, caused by Rich, the US military this, machine? Never mind killing people. You're going to love this then, because yesterday yeah. they published a, because they don't like Peru or Chile or any of those South American companies and uh, countries like the companies. There's a fraudulent slip. <laughs> That's what they think they are. They think they're companies. No, these countries that want, you know, democracy and stuff but they don't like that at all but in i think it's peru right now there was a satellite image that they took from the iss of mm -hmm. all the rivers in south america and they're shining gold right now because of all the illegal gold mining wow it's like well but bitcoin's the bad guy yeah Bitcoin, the energy required to, for Bitcoin to go, that's, that's the bad coin. Right now, the illegal mining for gold, something else that people, you know, use as a currency, is flooding all of these South American countries. But, you know, but they did do that the next day. To be fair to the BBC, the next day, it's like, well, here's the other side. Mm -hmm. of the but you have phone. to make that connection. They don't tell the audience, ah, look at this. To be fair, we have to do what Gordon's just done and laid it all out in front of you to say, no, we just do the, each one as a standalone thing. Keep people in their boxes, keep the people thinking the linear way that we want them to think and then we can control them. Isn't that the what they're doing? Oh, it's just, I mean, I, 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 I stopped watching the BBC and paying attention to The Guardian years ago. Years and years ago, it's appalling. I, most of my no, friends no, did, and they're smart like you, but I have to, like I say. I've got it. There's no real analysis anymore. No. There's no real analysis. There's no looking at both sides or whatever and digging deep and whatever. It's like, you know, whatever, whatever governments and the, with, backed by the CIA and the banksters and the MI6, they, whatever they put out, like orange man bad, orange man bad, Joe Biden. That... Oh, they're having a hell of a time at the moment, Rich. He's gone. I mean... They're having, to talk, they're having to send tweets out saying Donald Trump's playing golf. That's what the news in America, that's what they're saying in the news. <sighs> Donald Trump's playing golf. That's the headline. Oh, God. They don't know what to do now. He's gone. He's go that's right. Their ratings are down. CNN ratings are down. But anyway. This anyway. is what impeachment is. It's America season two. It's Trump, oh, America's Trump season two, the impeachment. They've got to keep the ratings going. Oh, Gordon, what a scam. What a scam. No investigation. I read the tweets. He never said anything like that. And it was a false flag, as far as I can tell, from the stuff I've looked at. People like John Sullivan. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a false flag. I would say it's, 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 a, it's a bloody, it's an orange nutcase who radicalized a load of people who um, don't know what the truth is because they've been lied to so much by their own government and their own news agencies. That's basically what I think. I wouldn't say false flag. I would say, no, it's a, it's a shit show is what it is. Well, I have, seen, I have seen videos on Twitter. It probably won't be on now, right? Of the police letting people in. Yeah, me too. A guy called John Sullivan, who is a BLM, and he was there and a few others. But also... Why was it so poorly defended? Well, look, pe people, people, people Parliament? did Which you see the Black Lives Matter protest? Did you see them queued up on the steps of the Capitol with the Black Lives Matter in their full military gear? There was yeah. no way the Black Lives Matter were getting anywhere near that. But yeah. that day, January the 6th, they could. And they were like, well, you know, it was arranged. It's like, well, the FBI and the CIA have Facebook and Twitter. They know that people were, were, were organizing for that day. I've seen the evidence myself. You don't, you don't need to be a, a, a multi-trillion dollar agency to figure out what was going on there. 
Yeah. But they let it happen, didn't they? That's the thing. And now I, I've had people um, say to me, yeah, they let it happen because there were people high up who were fascists, who were aiding it. They were the fascists were letting them in. But it's I like, so, so why aren't those people going to prison right now? Why aren't those people, where's the investigation and those people going to prison? It, it, it all seemed to me like, just a, a, a bunch of nonsense because America is just a, a dying empire of a country and nobody knows what to do over there about yeah. anything. Well, the fascists are the Dems. They are the Democrats, right? Thank in, you. In, impeaching a private citizen, you know? I had this conversation with somebody, you know, last week. Yeah. I, you know, they, they were certain that they beat fascism at the ballot box. First of all, I said, you don't beat fascism at the ballot box. And if you think that you beat fascism, then I, then I, I would like to show you 30, 40 years of neoliberal policies. I actually show you Joe, Joe Biden's policies from him as Obama's VP, and then go back to his record as a senator. Because if you look at all this stuff, if you look at taking two wars to five, another and the two wars to seven another five wars unconstitutional doesn't matter bombing the crap out of a load of brown people over there didn't declare war on they didn't the attack us doesn't matter isn't that a little bit fascist isn't you know holding these people at the border and forcing them to have but you know hold on hold on hold on because hold on. the problem with you and i right is that we agree on all of this stuff we're pretty similar politically right we may be too i have to tell you the, the problem with donald trump is that he sent out lots of clumsily worded offensive tweets. Surely yeah. that's much, much worse than killing people and bopping, bop, dropping bombs on high on shepherds and farmers in Afghanistan. And now they're going to start doing it in Syria again for crying out loud. Nothing's tweets, going to offensive change. Offensive tweets are much worse. That's fascism. Nothing's going to change. And the worst thing about it is, you know, the Dems get done what the Republicans can't get done. And then the Republicans get done what the Dems can get done. Let me give you an example. You got Bill Clinton, who did the Telecommunications Act and the Crime Bill. You know, those two things Republicans love, absolutely love. What? You mean we can have a Telecommunications Act, which will basically get away, uh, get, get rid of 50 news agencies and turn yeah. them into five? Brilliant. Brilliant. There's no way the Republicans could have got that passed. There's no way the Republicans could get a three structure, uh, sorry, a, a, a crime bill through that Bill Clinton got through. You know, mm. it took the Democrats to be able to get those things through. And now you look at uh, you look at Trump and you look at what Trump did. Trump attacked the First Amendment. He attacked it by going after Julian Assange, doing the one thing that that. Obama and Biden said that they couldn't do. We couldn't go after Assange because it would be an attack on the First Amendment and the free press. What happens? Donald Trump gets it done. He will get all the blame. When Biden comes in, it's like, yeah, we're going to carry on with that. Yeah, no, I get it. I, we're going to carry on with that. Which, no, which brings us back to the opportunity of cryptocurrencies because it allows for the, it takes the control of value transfer from central banks and governments. It's fighting back against empire, isn't it, mate? Yeah, it's the opportunity for us all, right? Decentralization, grassroots, people having agency, having financial agency over their own lives and owning it, right? Now, Gordon, I got to get on. I have wish to I had on. more time, I wish oh, I, well, I, 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 an hour's flown. We should do this as a regular thing. And I'm going to, you know, for anybody who's watching on my channel, you should go check out Gordon. Gordon, he does political stuff. Um, I, I do a little bit, but I would invite you, Gordon, and I can talk to you separately about doing a bit more crypto stuff. Um, but all the links, relevant links in the description below. And Gordon, just thank you so much. You know, one day you and I are going to meet. When, when the yeah, government sure. gives us permission, so the government says it's okay for people to meet and talk to each other, <laughs> then... Mate, yeah, we're, we're in a great situation great. at the moment where holidays are illegal. That's a line from the government. Yeah. Holidays are illegal. Well, it's illegal for children to go from one house to go and play with children in another house. It's illegal for my children to go and see their grandparents. But you can work a 15-hour shift at Amazon with a thousand other people. Yes. Yes. All right. Good. It doesn't Thank make you. sense, does it, mate? The world's gone crazy. We are down that 
rabbit hole. We are in the upside down or whatever it's called. <laughs> yes, listen, we're going to fight back. And the way to do it is with crypto, I think. I'm with you, mate. Thanks thank so you. much, Rich. I'll speak right. to you again very, very soon. Indeed. Uh, so subscribe, comment, all that business. He hasn't said it, so I'm going to say it. Subscribe, comment, like, or whatever. Follow us both. And uh, this is Crypto Rich and Crypto Gordon signing out. All the best. Bye-bye.